Hey, good evening. Good evening, Encounter family. We want to welcome everyone that is watching tonight for our Midweek Connect Bible study. We're so thankful that you've tuned in with us. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Very familiar portion of Scripture, Crystal. Yes, it, it is. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And it's so true. I also like verse 20 as well. You know, verse 20 says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Mm -hmm. So notice this, out of our mouth, is going to bring satisfaction or unsatisfaction. Yes. Have you ever had, you know, just a day that just seems to be going nowhere? It's just doom and gloom all day. And if you keep speaking, oh, this, this stinks. This is not going right. But if you turn your vocabulary around and just try to see some kind of good in the midst of it all and you start speaking it and saying, you know what? In spite of all of this, Lord, you said this is the day that you have made and I will choose to rejoice and be glad even though it's crazy and I can't see good right now. You say that you're working things out. You know what? Before too long, my attitude has changed. I no longer have the sour stomach because I'm speaking good things. I'm speaking the word of God over my situation. You know, that's so good. Many times we say, Quit speaking the situation and begin to speak the revelation. Yes. One thing I want us to know tonight is that God has established a word environment. Yes, he has. You know, when we go back to the very beginning in Genesis, when God spoke the worlds into existence, that's exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. He spoke. Yeah. So when we speak the word, not only is it powerful, but it's creative. Yes, it is. The words we speak will either create the atmosphere we want. Mm -hmm. And that means that though we may be in a tough situation, we don't have to allow that situation to dictate our emotions. That's right. How many times we allow our emotions to dictate what we're saying? Mm -hmm. When we have to get back to God's word and say, okay, wait a minute, this is what God's word says over my situation. That's right. So I'm going to declare that. You know, when we're talking about how we live in this world that is dominated um, by the words, mm -hmm. by the words we speak. It's important for us to understand that any power that we give to the enemy is through our words. That's right. Words is the entrance upon which the enemy begins to plot and begins to work out his trickery in our yeah. life. Yeah. And so we know that we're not going to give the enemy an inch. Nope. Because when we give him an inch, he takes over. Oh, yeah. And so it's important. So when we begin to speak negative words, the enemy begins to use those words against us. Mm -hmm. And it is so important that we speak the word of the Lord. Remember what we just read, that a man's stomach shall be satisfied mm -hmm. from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. That's right. You know, Crystal, through, throughout the entire Bible, it's demonstrated that words change everything. Yeah. God's word and your words. Angels listen and obey God's word. Yes, they do. It tells us that in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So it is so important that when we're talking about words that we're speaking, not our own words, mm -mm. but God's word. That's right. And it's, and it's important for us in order to speak God's word, we got to be in God's words every day. Yeah. We won't know what to say if we're not. We won't know what to say. <laughs> that is so true. So let God's word stay in your eyes and in the middle of your heart. Turn with me also to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and we'll begin reading in verse 21. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 21 says, Do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not let what? His words. His word. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Mm -hmm. In other words, keep them in the midst of your spirit. That's right. The Bible also tells us here in Proverbs 4.23 to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life mm -hmm. or spring the issues of life. 
So it is so important because he also tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right. So notice what he says. Keep the words of God in the midst of your heart. Keep the words of God in the midst of your spirit. Mm -hmm. Our spirit is hungry. So is our flesh. Yep. And our flesh is fed by the world. Yep. Our spirit is fed by God's word. Yes. So how important it is to feed our spirit on a daily basis with God's word. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, for it is living and active, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. Well, right here in verse 22, it says, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Now notice that health means it is medicine. Yes. So the word of God is not only life-giving, but it's medicine that is given to our spirits. That's right. When we're discouraged and we're down and we're wanting to give up, we've got to get back to the word of God and begin to speak the right things. Mm -hmm. Declare God's word over your life. And as you declare God's word over your life, that now gives the ability of the Holy Spirit to begin to move in our life because we're speaking God's word. That's right. But anytime we begin to speak what's contrary to God's word, what we're doing is literally we're handcuffing mm -hmm. the spirit of God moving in our life. And we're bringing destruction to our flesh. Correct. Because we're feeding our flesh. Exactly. Then what happens is we're no longer being satisfied by the goodness of God, but we're being frustrated by the situations that we're going through. That's right. And so I want to live in a place where I'm satisfied. Amen. That if I'm, if I'm facing hell, I'm going to face it with a water pistol and still rejoice because I know the word of God that's in me mm -hmm. and the word that I'm standing on. That's right. And so it's important we keep the word of the Lord strong in our spirit. So keep your spirit strong in the word because out of your spirit comes the force of life. Amen. So out of our spirit, man, comes the force of life. So it is so important we keep our spirit man strong because there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit. Always. And whatever you feed the most is going to win. That's right. Because whatever you feed is going to get stronger. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing. and by hearing, hearing the word of God. So how does our faith increase? by continually hearing the word of the Lord Absolutely. and speaking the word of God. I think many times in our walk with the Lord, the person that needs to hear it the most is ourselves. Absolutely. And so keep your spirit man strong. I want you to read verse 24 in that same chapter of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse, verse 24. 24. Okay. Put away from you deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Now notice this, a disobedient mouth and perverse lips speak twisted words that are not from God. Right, isn't that just what the devil did in the garden? He, he twists, he always. He always does. He always <laughs> twists, he'll twist the word. Mm -hmm. He'll leave enough little word in there where you think it's of God, but he'll twist it and that he's a great deceiver. Yep. But may I remind you tonight that when the devil speaks, he speaks out of his own nature, and that nature is deception. Yes. So it is so important that we speak out of an obedient mouth, yeah. a mouth that is righteous, mm -hmm. a mouth that is set on the word of God mm -hmm. so that our words are right on point. Yes. And it's important because, listen, a fool's words trap him into destruction yes. proverbs 18 7 you and i will be snared or trapped with the words of our mouth proverbs 6 and 2 mm -hmm. so keep your eyes looking straight ahead on god's word yes yes see the tongue or the words of the wise bring health mm -hmm. That tells us there in Proverbs 12, 18. Words will bring good things to eat and by association, a good life. Mm. Proverbs 13 and 2. Proverbs 15 and 4 says, a wholesome tongue or word brings continual life. Yep. Then Proverbs 18 and 20, 
Increase is certain by speaking God's word and promises. Yes. So when we speak God's word, Crystal, according to Proverbs 18, 20, it will bring increase in our life. Increase is certain in a believer's life when we continually speak the word of God and, and, and declare it and stand on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Your words make choices for your life. Life, death, blessing, or cursing. That's right. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. And as we read in our text tonight, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, mm -hmm. and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. And so it's important we speak God's word. That's James right. chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. You and I can turn our whole life around with words. Absolutely. The tongue is the start button, and things will end either in hell fire or Holy Spirit fire. Mm. I want the Holy Spirit fire. <laughs> so our tongue is the start button. Yep. Are we going to speak the fire of God, or are we going to, ex to speak the fire of our situation? Mm. And so, once again, it is so important. I know we keep hammering this over and over again mm -hmm. about speaking the word and declaring the word, but it is so important because it determines the course of our life. Absolutely. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yep. And if our heart is, is weary, it mm -hmm. is so easy to begin to speak about the negativity of our circumstance or the situations we're going through. Mm -hmm. And so we have to stop and say, wait a minute, I have to speak out of a healthy spirit. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can speak out of a healthy spirit is if I've had a daily infusion of God's word. Right. If I've had a daily infusion of the medicine, of the good news of the gospel, mm -hmm. and thus it lifts my spirits to a place now where I can begin to declare the word of God and speak the word of God over, the, over my situation. Amen. So it is so important that we speak God's word. That's right. Listen, words are powerful. God exalts his word even above his name. Psalms 138 and verse 2. Isn't that amazing? So he exalts his word. Mm -hmm. Think about that. He exalts his word even above his name. And yet the Bible says there is no other name given mm -hmm. by which men may be saved. That's right. And at that name, every knee every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. So he's saying, listen, I hold my word higher than that name. Yes. I mean, that's just powerful. It's also re important that when we look at uh, Malachi 3.13, that we have to repent. Mm -hmm. for the stout words that we speak against God's will. Yes. The Holy Spirit has rebuked me a few times. Listen to this. God cannot move for us against the words we speak. Right. So if we're speaking one thing that's contrary to God's word, God wants to move, but he can't move because we're not speaking the right thing. That's right. We handicap him. Exactly, because what, what happens is we're not coming to agreement with not only who God is, but what is his word. Right. That's right. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. He goes on that same chapter and says, but without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so... There is times in my life, there's times in your life, as you just said, that we have to simply to say, Lord, please forgive me that I've spoken words against your will. Yeah. And literally what has happened is I've, 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 I've been paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Not with a spirit of fear. Right. I've been paralyzed because I've spoken the wrong things. Right. There's been seasons I've had to walk through a harvest that I didn't want to walk through, but it's a result of what I spoke. Mm -hmm. So instead of speaking out of a satisfied spirit, I've been unsatisfied, but it's a result of what I've said. Right. So we got to be very careful what we speak. You said something about the diligence. You know, we talked about, you know, the diligence um, about keeping our heart in it, you know, being diligent in that, and then diligent of what we say and seeking after the Lord. Mm. Diligence 
is sometimes work. It it's is. It's discipline. I was just about to say, <laughs> it's discipline. Yes. Yes. When I'm just mediocre looking for something, you know, it's half-heartedly. But when I'm diligently looking for something, nothing else matters at this moment. I've got to find this object or I'm looking for this object. And that's how God wants us to be with him. Are we diligently yes. seeking him so we will have the revelation of what he wants for us? He says, because I want you to prosper in every single area of your life. It's more than just fire insurance. You know, saying, I'm saved and I'm not going to go to hell. He wants us to be satisfied, mm. knowing that our hope and everything in him is, is fulfilled. And it cannot be done until he is first and foremost, diligently. That means everything else has to be pushed to the side. And my focus has to be number one on him. It's so true. And, and how many times have you ever gone into a store asking if they have something, but really not being able to explain right. the item correctly. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I, I don't know the name of it, but it, it does this or it does that. And you have to go through that, that process of trying to figure out, as the salesperson is looking at you, like, what are you really trying to find? Mm -hmm. When you look in the spiritual realm, if we're speaking the wrong things, God's like, really, what do you want? Right. I'm wanting to do this in your life. I'm wanting to bring healing. I'm wanting to deliver you, but your words are stopping me. Mm -hmm. Our words will either stop or release blessings in our life. Yes. You know, he says in Mark 11, 20 through 24, Jesus said, everything you say and believe will come to pass. That's scary sometimes because we speak some negative things and and I have seen the harvest of those negative things. And, and you know, because a lot of times as church members, we always say, whoo, you know, whatever I'm asking the Lord, it's going to come to pass. Well, let's flip that. Mm -hmm. If you're not speaking God's word, that's still a correct scripture. Yes, it is. And so it's important that we have to speak his word and speak according to his will. That's right. Jesus said, according to your belief, may it be unto you. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to encourage you tonight, continue to speak God's word, begin, continue to declare the goodness of God over your life and over your family. We love you. You know, let's just pray for our, 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 our family members tonight. Yes. Pray for those that are watching. We love you. And, you know, I know that we're living in a day and hour that it's not easy. No, a lot of uncertainty. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of things going in our life. Um, life is demanding a lot of change mm -hmm. and, and change at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. And we just got to make sure that we're speaking the right things and declaring the good news of God Amen. over our life. Yes. Father God, we just praise you and we thank Jesus. you, Lord. We thank you for your word tonight. Yes, Father, I pray for all of those that are watching, Lord, whether it's through Facebook or YouTube. Amen. Father, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would touch every heart and touch every mind. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, and God, if we've spoken things against your will, then Father, we ask for your forgiveness. Yes, you do, We're asking tonight, Father God, for more of you. Yes. So Lord, I pray, God, that we would not only stand on your word, but Lord, we would speak your word. Yes. God, that we would declare your word, that we would not be led by our emotions, by what we hear or what we see. But, Father, we'll be led by what we believe. Amen. Thank so, Father, I just pray tonight, God, that, Lord, you know the needs of your people. You yes, know the Jesus. needs of those that are watching us tonight. And, Father, we declare and we speak the word of the living God over every situation. And, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you're wanting to give your tithes and offering, you can do so. You can go to EncounterCOG.com. Go to our homepage. Click on the Give button. It'll take you to a secure site. And there you can give your contributions. Or you can mail them in here to the church office or stop by Monday through Thursday from 9 until 1 and give them in person. Know this, we love you, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for partnering with us in the ministry here at Encounter Church. 
there are some great things taking place. Looking forward to what is going to be happening in our future. Yes. As we're looking towards September, our very first Sunday in September, our children's ministry, that would be pre-K to uh, 12 years old, will start back on Sunday morning. So we're excited about that. And we have some other great things that's going to be coming up that we'll be letting you know here in the next couple of weeks. But we're just excited to see what the Lord is doing in this house. Yes. And doing in your family. And also, too, all of our parents, we're praying for you, praying for all of our students, whether you um, headed back in, in, um, on campus or you're doing it through virtual school right yes. now. We are praying for all of our students and praying for our parents during this time. We love you. We appreciate you. Remember, we are Encounter Strong. Strong. Be blessed in Jesus' name.